Hello, welcome to our second episode of where the stones have a story to tell. We are in Gilbert Hills State Forest, Foxborough, Massachusetts, and the stones with a story to tell today are standing stones. Standing stones are named in a pretty straightforward way. They're stones that stand up straight out of the ground. Some will have three sides, four sides, some are flat, some are pointed, some are surrounded by a ring of stones. So they have different features and variations, but what's not clear is what they were used for. Mary and James Cage, very prolific researchers and writers of stone structures or about stone structures in New England, uh, have a video uh, that I've put the link to in the description here where they talk about standing stones uh, and they also describe the spirit uh, structure of the belief system of Native Americans, underworld, middle world, and upper world. If uh, in a few episodes we will cover niches uh, where there are stones creating a small space right on the surface of the ground, roughly close to the surface of the ground. If those were potentially used for a connection between underworld and middle world, it's been postulated that standing stones are the opposite, connecting the upper world to the middle world. The cages have stated they think they might be uh, a form of notches, notches, something we'll cover in a later episode, but they help align, orient a viewer to a particular celestial or solar event. Whatever the case may be, uh, they're very striking. They certainly weren't left by glaciers in their appearance uh, as they stand straight up, uh, seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Uh, however, right behind you here uh, in the view, I can see the outcropping where the dolmen and the aligned boulders are. And this, uh, this angle faces directly toward there. So. We're gonna cover a handful of these I found in the forest with a number of different features and structure types. And let's take a closer look at this one. Take a look at stonesites.net, another uh, website that I've uh, listed here. This is uh, item F uh, on that site. So uh, they identified this as one of the 25 sites uh, that they've studied on stonesites.net. And we are just north of the Megley Trail. Uh, if you can see Tully there in our camera spot, right behind him is Megley. So we're not very far off of the Megley Trail uh, for uh, this standing stone. As I mentioned, uh, it is curved a bit at the top. Some you'll see are very flat. I'm gonna come over the top of it now, take a look down. And uh, I would consider that to be uh, four-sided. This, this side down here is flat, uh, not pointed. So we come back to this flat side down here. Uh, again, we're talking about three and a half feet. Little crack forming at the top now. Some uh, stones will have bulges down the side. This is pretty well smoothed out all uh, along each side. I'd like to take a little time to show you the app I've been using in this video and will use in many videos going forward. This is the Sunseeker app. For our purposes, this locates the location of the sun at any given time on any given day of the year. So you just scroll through the timelines here and as you can see, these are moving with the days of the year. The critical ones for us are marked right on the timeline. I happen to be on March, uh, which is the spring equinox. And you can see in this case, sunrise and sunset located. The center is where you're going to be. So this really helps us see what angles uh, are generated from these stone structures toward any one of these events. Moving to the summer solstice, sunrise, sunset, same thing for the fall equinox and the winter solstice. So this is what I use when I'm studying the individual structures and seeing if they have an orientation to any of these solar events. Now you know this is available on the iOS uh, and Android app stores.
So our second standing stone here is similar to the first. This is exactly three feet tall. It is four-sided. It does have a notch here on one of its sides. You see that's four-sided. It has a ring of stones around its base. And when we take a look at the angles it generates, uh, it could be interpreted to bisect uh, the stone along the fall and spring equinox. It could also be uh, that this angle here faces a sunset at the winter solstice. And the opposite side faces sunrise at the summer solstice. So with a number of different angles potentially oriented to solstice and equinox events, uh, we've got a pretty standard four-sided, a little bit of a bulge or a notch. Standing stone, exactly three feet tall, precisely three feet off the ground, and uh, probably about six stones around its base as a ring. Excellent example of four-sided standing stone. All right, Tilly and I are up for a ride and off to the side of the trail. Not the leaves are down. I noticed the object standing up out here, and lo and behold, get yourself a standing stone. Look at that. That is about two and a half feet high. It does have a ring of stones around it. I would consider that a four-sided standing stone. If we take a look at the compass, that runs pretty well north, south, east, and west. Not likely to line up to a solstice or equinox event. But we can always take a quick look on our trusty Sunseeker app. Now, no real alignment there, but you definitely have a standing stone here, uh, pointed, four-sided, with a ring uh, around it, oriented generally north, south, east, and west. Never know what you're going to find it's out like here. like the huh? other day when Telly and I are out roaming around, end up finding another standing stone that we hadn't marked before, seen before. Um, this is interesting about two and a half feet high, bulges uh, here certainly. I would consider that also to be a four-sided stone. I don't see any real orientation uh, to any solstice or equinox, but uh, here you go. Another example of a pointed four-sided standing stone in Gilbert Hills State Forest. You never know what you're gonna find when you roam around out here enough. All right, we are up on uh, probably one of the last structures considered essentially a standing stone. If you have uh, looked into stonesites.net, you found this to be uh, under the letter V. Initially enough, this, uh, this standing stone marks uh, a line of four objects uh, pretty much in a direct line from west to east. The biggest prayer seat uh, that we'll start uh, the prayer seat um, episode with the next episode, along with several uh, two other prayer seats, uh, which will be featured in uh, in another uh, episode, <clears throat> and then this one, and they're all pretty much in a straight line. You can see uh, here almost a Manitou type stone. It's different than some of the others that we've seen, where they are uh, almost uh, a pillar, uh, straight up and down. This one. Sits at about two and a half feet. It is pyramidal, pyramid in shape. Uh, I'm not even sure how to describe the sides of this. Probably four sides: one, two, three, and a side back there. <clears throat> and it is <clears throat> surrounded uh, by several stones 
a boulder behind it. Some rocks piled up to the left of that boulder right there. Uh, some embedded boulders around this. And then a rock that certainly could have been placed there. I've run the Sunseeker app over this. I can't find any real correlation uh, to this standing stone to any of the equinox uh, or solstice events. Uh, but it uh, certainly is out here for some reason. And another great mystery here of the uh, likely Native American structures in uh, Gilbert Hills State Forest. I'd like to finish the video on the standing stones with a still shot of a three sided standing stone. This only stood about 12 to 18 inches out of the ground, it was very solidly in the ground. You can see that it's, it is three-sided, almost looks like it's pointing in a certain direction. It had no orientation to north, south, east, or west, or any of the sunseeker locations for sunrise, sunset on the solstices or the equinox. But I did want to leave off with the demonstration of a three-sided uh, structure. And then just close out this video with, uh, with a recap. Uh, you've seen five standing stones here at Gilbert Hills State Forest. Some are uh, surrounded by a ring of stones at, its, at their base, some are not. Some have bulges or notches in them, some do not. Many of them are four-sided, uh, one here is three-sided. So there's not a lot to take away from the purpose. The purpose is still shrouded in mystery for the standing stones. But in the section later on in this series, when we get to explore the angles between structures, we may find that standing stones had a relationship to other sites uh, throughout the forest. Thank you. And the next episode will be a three-part series on prayer seats. See you then.